It's that time of year again, October 4th, 2025, and the first long-range winter forecasts for Europe are in. This winter, a major player is on the scene, La Nina, a climate phenomenon from the Pacific Ocean. La Nina's influence will shape weather from Spain's coasts to the Alps' peaks. Early forecasts help us prepare. Will it be a season for snow lovers or a mild, forgettable winter? Two main forecasting models are in the spotlight, the European ECMWF and the British UKMO. They're telling different stories. One hints at a colder, snowier end to winter, the other at a milder season. We'll break down what La Nina is, how it works, and what each forecast predicts. Which regions might see more snow? Which less? Let's investigate. Europe's weather is a complex mix of influences. La Nina is just one piece. The science is complicated, but the stakes are high for millions. Our job? Explain the differences and give you the most likely scenario. This winter could be a nail-biter, with surprises in store. La Nina is known for curveballs, especially in Europe's unpredictable climate. We'll help you cut through the noise and get ready for whatever comes. Whether you're a skier, commuter, or just curious, you'll want to know what's ahead. Let's dive into the forecasts and see what this winter might bring. Here's what you need to know for the months ahead. So, what is La Nina? It's a cooling of the tropical Pacific surface waters, and it sets off a chain reaction in global weather. This cooling changes air movement worldwide, shifting storm tracks and temperature patterns. La Nina is the cool counterpart to El Nino, and even a weak event can have big impacts. North America feels La Nina most directly, colder, stormier in the north, drier in the south. But Europe's connection is more subtle. La Nina's influence travels through the atmosphere, nudging the jet stream that steers weather systems toward Europe. If the jet stream shifts, Europe could get mild, wet air from the south or cold, dry air from the north. But La Nina's signal has to compete with other local patterns, like high pressure over the Atlantic or Siberia. That makes Europe's winter especially tricky to predict. Still, La Nina is a major player this season, and the big weather models are factoring it in. The result? We get an early glimpse. Will it be a snowy wonderland or a snowless winter? The answer depends on how La Nina interacts with Europe's unique climate mix. Forecasters are piecing together the puzzle, but the outcome is far from certain. La Nina's reach is long, but its grip on Europe is indirect. This season, it's adding a twist to the forecast. The models are watching closely, and so are we. Europe's winter will be shaped by this global phenomenon but local factors will decide the details. Stay tuned as we see how the Pacific's chilly gift plays out. Let's look at the ECMWF forecast, the gold standard for many meteorologists. For November through January, it predicts below average snowfall for most of Europe. That means a milder, less snowy start. Bad news for early ski trips, but good for travel. There are exceptions. Scandinavia and the southern UK could see more snow than usual. The ECMWF paints a tale of two winters, a quiet start, but hints at a shift later. As January approaches, the model suggests colder, snowier conditions, especially for the UK and Central Europe. This back-loaded winter could mean a slow start, but a wintry punch to finish. For snow lovers, patience may pay off. The forecast suggests a season that evolves, mild early, wintry late. It's a compelling scenario, with the potential for dramatic change after the holidays. If you're hoping for snow, don't give up after December. The real action could be just around the corner. We'll be watching to see if this pattern shift materializes. Breaking down the ECMWF forecast month by month gives us a clearer timeline. November. Most of Europe sees below average snowfall, except for high Scandinavia. December. The mild dry trend continues. White Christmas dreams may be dashed in cities like London or Vienna, a few exceptions. The Central Balkans, far south of Great Britain, and parts of Scandinavia could see more snow. January is the plot twist. The model shows a surge in snow potential, especially for the UK and Central Europe. A high-pressure block to the north could unleash Arctic air, setting up classic wintry conditions. The message? Don't judge winter by its start. 
A mild November and December don't rule out a snowy January. The ECMWF suggests a season of two halves, quiet early, dramatic late. For snow fans the best may come after New Year's. This shift is the most important part of the forecast, it could turn a dull winter into a memorable one. The key patience and preparation for a possible late season punch. Stay alert for changes as the season unfolds. For balance, let's check the UK Met Office UKMO model. Its forecast is much less optimistic for snow lovers. The UKMO predicts a consistently mild dry winter across almost all of Europe, November and December. Below average snowfall everywhere with no surprise snow pockets. Only far northern Scandinavia might see normal winter conditions. The UKMO model stays the course, no sign of a pattern shift in January. If it's right, Europe faces a gentle, forgettable winter. Good for heating bills, bad for ski resorts. The UKMO is known for a warm bias, especially in early forecasts. This means it often underestimates the chance for cold and snow. The contrast with ECMWF is stark. One model sees a late winter surge, the other sees none. This forecasting split is a real challenge. Which model will be right? That's the big question. For now, the UKMO's vision is a mild, snow light season. But its warm bias is something forecasters keep in mind. The story isn't settled yet, we'll keep watching as new data comes in. With two different forecasts, which should we trust? The ECMWF has a stronger track record for long-range predictions. It's not perfect, but it's often better at spotting major seasonal trends. The UKMO, while powerful, tends to predict milder, drier winters, especially in early runs. Forecasters know this warm bias and factor it in. They don't ignore the UKMO, but they weigh ECMWF's forecast more heavily. The ECMWF's call for a pattern shift in January is seen as plausible. The UKMO's mild outlook is less convincing, given its history. The best approach? Blend both models, but lean toward ECMWF's scenario. Long-range forecasting is tough, there are many variables. For now, the smart money is on a slow start, then a colder, snowier January. We'll keep tracking the models as winter approaches. The picture will get clearer with new data, Stay tuned for updates as the season nears. La Nina is a global event, with impacts far beyond Europe. In North America, it brings colder, wetter weather to the north and drier conditions to the south. Australia often gets wetter, with increased flood risk. Southeast Asia and Southern Africa also see rainfall changes. These impacts are fairly predictable, making La Nina a valuable forecasting tool elsewhere. Europe, though, is a tougher case. The Atlantic Ocean buffers Europe from La Nina's direct effects. Europe's winter is shaped by a mix of influences. La Nina is just one ingredient. Other factors, like the North Atlantic Oscillation, can be even more important. That's why La Nina doesn't guarantee a certain winter for Europe. Some La Nina winters are cold and snowy, others mild and wet. The outcome depends on how global and local patterns interact. Forecasting Europe's winter is a complex, fascinating challenge. If the ECMWF forecast comes true, what would winter look like? November and December would be mild, with little snow for most of Europe. Good news for travelers, but tough for ski resorts and snow lovers. Scandinavia and the southern UK might see some early snow. For most, winter would feel delayed, maybe even a green Christmas, but in January, the pattern could flip. A high-pressure block could unleash Arctic air, bringing snow and cold to the UK and Central Europe. Several weeks of wintry weather would follow. Great for snow fans, challenging for commuters. Energy demand would rise, and cities would need to be ready for snow and ice. The season's character would be defined by its second half. Memories of winter would center on a cold, snowy January. This back-loaded pattern is dramatic and memorable. It's a reminder. Winter doesn't always start on time, but it can still pack a punch. If you're waiting for snow, patience could pay off. The ECMWF scenario is dynamic. Mild start, strong finish. So what's the bottom line? Europe's winter probably won't be snowless, but snow may arrive late. This is a complex, uncertain forecast. Long-range models show trends, not guarantees. 
The ECMWF's backloaded winter seems more likely than the UKMO's mild scenario. Expect a slow start, but be ready for a wintry shift after New Year's. La Nina sets the stage but local patterns will decide the details. Forecasters will keep updating as new data comes in. For now, plan for a mild November and December. Ski resorts may need snowmaking early on. White Christmas chances are lower than usual. But keep your winter gear handy. January could bring a real winter punch. The most likely scenario? A dramatic shift to cold and snow in early 2026. Stay tuned for updates as the forecast evolves. That's the latest on Europe's winter outlook.